Replay, Taking Action, Standing Out in a Crowd, and More Awesomeness with Ben Glass, Episode 253. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit-generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Profit with Law podcast. I'm coming to you with an amazing guest today. This guest is somebody who um, I actually, I had him on my shelf. He's an author and I had his book on my shelf, but didn't really know who he was. And uh, a couple of social media posts where people were talking about him and I said, hmm, maybe this is somebody that I need to reach out to and get to have here on the podcast. Uh, as I dove more into his background and, and uh, what he's been doing in the legal industry, uh, it's become apparent that um, I've waited too long to bring Ben Glass here on, onto the podcast. Uh, ben Glass is the founder and CEO of Great Legal Marketing and Ben Glass Law. Um, he's a dad to nine, attorney and entrepreneur. And in addition to running his own personal injury and disability law practice, um, he founded Great Legal Marketing, which is an organization that helps solo and small firm lawyers learn to grow their law firms into practices that fit their best life. And I love the sound of that. Those of you who have been listening to me for a while know that this is very much aligned with my message. Um, I believe that there's a ton of change that has to happen in the legal industry. Uh, I believe that the primary reason that we are in business is to besides for making an impact on the world, is to provide for our families, is to provide for our future, and to be able to provide for the world in other ways. And I think that Ben does a great job in preparing people for that. Uh, so uh, without further ado, uh, Ben, welcome to the show. Hey, man, Moshe. Thanks for having me on today. It is my pleasure. And uh, I do appreciate your time. And, and I know our time is valuable. We're going to try to pack as much as we can in for our audience. But before we do that, um, for those people who haven't heard of Ben Glass, can you just give me the, the, the quick rundown of who you are, how you became an attorney, and how you ended up uh, helping other attorneys uh, become successful? Yeah, so I always start with uh, what my license plate says, which is dad to nine. Um, so I, I followed a, a pretty traditional path into the law. I, I was uh, even pre-law, so I, I was fortunate. I, I played soccer at William & Mary, went to law school up here at George Mason, uh, in the early 80s, when it was a brand new accredited law school. Um, uh, got out of there, uh, hooked up with some, some good trial lawyers in the in Northern Virginia area, um, and worked with various iterations of that firm for 12 or 13 years, became a partner in that firm. Started actually doing insurance defense work, as many, as many lawyers do, um, you know, in, the, in, this, in the sort of the tort world, right? Um, at the same time, my family was growing, Moshe, I had, uh, Four kids at four at that time, I think. Uh, when this decision came out, I was coaching three soccer teams, and the commute was a bitch. <laughs> and I said, you know what many lawyers do, which is, I'm a good lawyer. I was getting good results. I was able to try cases. Uh, by that time, we had we were at switch doing mainly plaintiffs' work. Um, you know, how hard could it be to start your own law firm? Like this has got to be easy, right? And so I left. Uh, we we bought a, a a nice big house in Fairfax County. Uh, and then uh, four months later, left the firm to start my own venture. Um, and it was it was challenging. You know, I, I took cases with me. So we had some cash flow for a while. But I realized over this first couple of years, all the things I really didn't know um, about running a business, about marketing, advertising. I mean, that's just that's like the, the, the top, right? Getting cases in. How do you scale? How do you hire? All of that stuff. And so I began to um, to search out uh, both within the legal industry, and also outside the legal industry to say, you know, what are, what are sort of best practices? What are people doing? Um, found a guy uh, in that search, uh, Dan Kennedy, who's now become a good friend and mentor of mine, invested a lot of money and time in Dan's stuff where he was teaching, you know, how to be attractive, um, changed the way we marketed the practice. Um, and mine was a, at that point, a personal injury and a medical malpractice plaintiff's firm. 
um, started getting better results, um, doing better and, and, and really doing things that were different from what most lawyers were doing. And then about um, 15 years ago, really took what we had built in Ben Glass Law, brought it to market. It, in my search, you know, I'd looked around like, you know, what, what other lawyers are using direct response marketing? Um, I read all of the books, the ABA, every book I could read about marketing, and we were doing something different. So there wasn't a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot more out there now. A lot of it is very good stuff. Um, but created as almost now 16 years ago, Great Legal Marketing, which when we created it was teaching personal injury lawyers how to advertise better. It has since morphed and grown to um, really the entire solo and small firm market serving consumers or serving small biz to show most who come into the organization, they want to know how do I get more cases, right? Everybody wants to know how do I get more cases, patients, customers, whatever the business is. But now we've morphed into an organization that really helps you, as you said in the introduction, very kindly, you know, grow business that serves your life. And we firmly believe that if that if you're good and your family is good financially and emotionally, and then your employees are good financially and emotionally, that the clients will actually be served better and the community will be served better because we can do that better when we are when we're fit within all the realms, from spiritually to physically to financially, you know, in other realms. Um, and so that's what we're about today. So I'm still so the law practice has morphed over the years. Uh, we're, we, as you said in the introduction, it's made primarily a personal injury and a, a long-term disability law firm. I handled a long-term disability work um, at, at a, you know, at the top level. I've got folks that handle most of it. My son joined us almost two years ago to handle the personal injury side. We're very good. We're we're, we're good regional force in the personal injury, and we're we're a decent like national force in the ERISA long-term disability world. Um, and I've just surrounded myself with people who are really smart. Um, and good people. So we've learned a lot about employing people and developing culture. And so I'm all about, hey, if this, if 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 what you've just heard sounds interesting, uh, we can sh we, you know, my magic power, my superpower is taking any lawyer, talking to he or she, and figuring out where they are and what they know, and and then figuring out Moshe, like what's the best use of the next hour, the next dollar they have if they want to improve their practice. Like there's a lot of stuff out there. Most of it's pretty good, but there's an order to to this, to building this. Um, and that's what I'm really good at um, and like doing. And so I'm blessed today, 62 years old, CrossFit athlete, soccer referee. My youngest is 18, although I still have a bunch home now because of COVID and stuff. But I get to do really interesting work in both realms with really interesting people. Um, and I get to pick and choose the stuff that I like to do. Uh, so I wish, you know, I'm wishing for COVID to go away, mainly, not mainly, but in large part, because I'd like to be able to be out refereeing soccer games again high, at the high school level. Um, but I'm, I'm blessed. We, we do interesting stuff. We do well. Um, and almost every day, it's like, oh, that was cool. We had interesting problems to solve. Or, or we think of something that's really innovative in the, sp in, in the spaces that we're in. So, you know, I'm, I, again, a lot of hard work, as we talked about pre-call. Um, but very blessed to be where we are today. It's awesome and, and a great story. And, and dad of nine, right away, I resonate with that, not because I have nine kids, but I have five. Um, and I know in your book, I think four of your nine are adopted from, from China, okay. if I remember correctly, right? So um, uh, let's go there first. Uh, you know, how, how did you decide to adopt kids from China? And, and what was it like having nine kids in the house? Yeah, so I, I talk about this in a couple chapters in Play Left Fullback. So when we had four, my wife, Sandy, uh, thought that she felt called to adopt. I said, you're crazy. We've got four kids and a dog. We're all filled up. Uh, then my youngest biological son was born, and Sandy was like, oh, you know, I'm called to adopt. Um, and so my sister uh, and her husband uh, could not uh, have children, and so they were, it had explored, investigated the international adoption process had found um, China, had adopted a, a young girl from China. The turning point for us came, we went to a Stephen Kirsch Chapman concert back in 2002 or 2003. I just saw Stephen Kirsch um, two nights ago at a drive-in theater live concert up here in Northern Virginia. So that was awesome. Driving. That's pretty cool. 
revitalized. Yeah, and that concert changed our life. Um, absolutely changed the trajectory of our life. It's a the it, there's a lesson there that yes, one event, right speaker, right person coming into your life at the right time can can really alter, you know, the whole path of your life. And so we adopted. Uh, Kevin was 18 months at that time. He's 18, just turned 18 years uh, old. And then later went back, adopted Emma. She was six and a half. And then later went back, there were folks advocating for older children. And so David was 12 and Leah was 11. They were not biologically related, but they were at the same orphanage. We adopted them. Um, and so that's been, uh, that whole experience opened up a whole new world because when you're born and, and live most of your life in an orphanage, it's a, it's, a, it's a horrible thing. It doesn't matter how good the orphanage is. It's a horrible, traumatic thing for children. And so we had to relearn, Moshe, everything we thought we knew about parenting, we had to go back to school and relearn it. And so as lawyers come to you or they come to me and to learn about practice building, we attended seminars, sought out gurus, watched DVDs, read, you know, not hundreds, but, you know, 50 books on raising children from hard places. And so again, introduce us to people, healthcare providers, specialists, and friends all over the country now um, who are in that world. So it really opened up uh, and enriched our lives. And part of Sandy and my mission today is, and a, and a message anyone who's watching this should take is, and if you're thinking about international adoption or you know someone who has adopted and is, and is struggling with some of the issues that we're a really good resource. We don't have all the answers, but we really can help people, again, just like with the lawyers, how do we think about the problem? Who might you want to go read, watch, go, you know, fly across the country to go see, those sort of things. So, again, blessed. You never know. You never know, uh, Moshe, like, like you make these decisions and you take risks, you venture into places unknown, and you just never know where it's going to lead you. It, it, I, you know, I won't say it's all been flowers and roses. It has not been. It's been very, very challenging at times, but we get through it. Uh, just like running a business is not all roses. <laughs> it's, it has been very, very challenging at times, but um, you learn some principles like, Hey, seek out people who are farther along the path you are. Seek out gurus, take action, do work. None of this is magic. You have you know, human beings have to work and have to produce in order to live. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and I might, I might be a number of years behind you in, in the, in the life experience race, but um, there's, there's a lot of parallels in what I had to go through with my older girls. So I was married, got divorced, got married again. And my three older girls who are now 21, 19 mm. and 18, and I have my two little ones are four and three. So We've got to, I'm doing it all over again, um, but. So the good part, so, so the, the cool part is when you have children, you know, either a lot of them or over a, a, a range of time, you end up hanging out and running around with, we experience with younger families. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, we we've have kept active in youth sports and, you know, dance and all, you know, all those things that kids do. And I think that helps. I mean, I'm 62. I referee, I do CrossFit. I feel like, I still feel like I'm 18 pretty much. So there's a blessing in, in that. It is challenging is, you know, raising kids is, is hard no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my ex-wife ended up becoming an alcoholic and, and the kids, you know, they had, they went through a lot of trauma in that experience. And um, back in, in 2013, we, we, I, you know, I finally realized what was going on and uh, got them, um, you know, I ended up getting full custody and, and the kids at my, at my house completely. Um, but I had to go through a very similar thing of, of figuring out how to help them through the trauma they experienced and to, to become, um, you know, normal, typical children after having gone through that. Uh, so I became very well versed in um, Alateen, which is the, you know, the kids version of Al-Anon uh, support for families of, of uh, alcoholism and therapy. I mean, um, talk about talk about an expense. I thought I was getting rid of child support, but <laughs> instead it was going to a number of therapists at a very high hourly rate. But we, you know, I did what I needed to do because at the end of the day, um, you know, families first, like everything that, that I do is, is for my kids to, for the next generation. That's like the, you know, that's the impact I can leave on, on the world. And, um, 
you know, it, there's nothing that there's, there's, there's no bridge I wouldn't cross to, to help my kids succeed and, uh, and be successful. And I think that that's one of the things that I very quickly learned when I started to read your material and learn a little bit more about you is, um, that we are, we're on the same wavelength there, you know, like it's, it, yeah. that's the, that's the whole point. And there's a huge bridge because a lot of what you learn in dealing with trauma is, is you improve, you up your game in your own communication skills in your own listening skills, in your own empathy um, skills. And, you know, as lawyers, this is what we do, right? Um, and so we learn a lot of brain science. Um, it's just all interesting. And, you know, uh, one of our core values here is to be a forever learner. Um, you know, you know, from the book, you know, life's a one-way journey. Hopefully it's a nice long one and you're healthy through all of it or most all of it. And, you know, just keep, uh, my view is you, you keep doing interesting things or, or be involved in things that are good for you. And so now let's build a practice. Now let's identify what's good for you and your family. Now let's build a practice or a business that serves that. And it's okay to do that. And then let's, cr let's figure out who is the client, customer, patient, whatever, who serves that practice which serves your life. That's how the world goes around. And I'm really good at a lot of things. And I try to do things that I'm really good at. And I'm okay with outsourcing or just declining to do things that I'm not very good at. And I think a lot of people, Moshe, end up struggling to improve skills that they're not good at, where if we go and work on the stuff that's interesting to us, we actually can you know, turn the, uh, the flywheel faster. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that the, the core value of, of lifelong learning. Um, I haven't listed it as one of our core values, but it is something that I live and breathe by. Um, and I have my daughter, my 21 year old daughter works here at the company. Uh, she's, uh, she's in college for, uh, to become an editor. She wants to be a, a book editor. So she runs our podcast. She runs, you know, all of the editing that has to happen on, on that side. She's basically in charge of that. And she's doing that while she's in school, getting her bachelor's. And awesome. I told her that I wanted to start a, uh, a book club for lawyers to, I mean, everyone wants to like most entrepreneurs want to learn more. And, and often what happens is, is they know that they want to read, they have to read. So they'll buy some books. It goes on the shelf and it's, it becomes this pile of the to do, you know, to eventually I'll get to read this one day when I have the time. And sometimes if we, if we're part of a group that's going through something together, we're more motivated to get it done. Uh, so I, I had been wanting to start this and it just wasn't at the top of the priority list with, you know, everything else that we had going on. And she said, you know what? I, I want to own that project. Let me take that. Uh, so she just launched, um, uh, you can find it at the Reader's Nook is the name of the Facebook group. And basically you just go and join the group there. Our first month is August. So there's a poll right now to choose the first book. And she put five selections out there. Um, and uh, we're, we'll see where it goes. But uh, I, I thought it was a great idea when I ran the Law Firm Growth Summit, the first really successful virtual conference. Now everyone's virtual, but uh, we did it back in December before COVID came around. Um, we had 2,400 uh, law firm owners attending the, the Law Firm Growth Summit, a five-day event. And each night we had a live Q and A and I ran a poll every single night asking, you know, if I were to uh, start a book club for lawyers, is that something you'd be interested in? And we had 90% consistently say yes throughout the five days. So to me, it, it, it told me that that's something that there's a need for right now. It's a free thing. We, you know, whether we ever charge for it, we'll see, but, um, but we're going to get it off the ground and get it started. But I, you know, that, that goes right along the, those lines of lifelong learning. We can never know enough, we can never be the smartest person and we always need to be open to uh, new ideas, new possibilities. And if we can learn one new thing that we take forward from a book we read, you do that, you read a book a month, you learn 12 new things a year. That, that adds up to a lot over time. Yeah. So, so, so here's a, a great question to ask when you're reading a book and you're, you know, you're reading a part of it, you know, in the day, in the morning, just ask yourself, why is this in front of me today? Like what's the, what, there's a reason why I'm reading this book at this time, this paragraph, this chapter, what is it that's going on in my life today that this will help? And so, yeah, I mean, the books, you know, I'm preaching to the choir here, but it's, you, you leverage other people's experiences by reading books. Not every book gets deserved to read, you know, to be read to the end, 
Um, but there's so much good stuff. And especially for lawyers, you know, get out of the lawyer world for sure and, and, and read into both big corporations, small corporations. You know, we're reading, um, we just, our, our leadership team here is uh, just is reading Radical Candor and it's a really great book. And so- Oh, I love that book. <laughs> uh, yeah, because, you know, one of the challenges for law firms who are growing is the people component and getting the right people, right, right people in, on the bus, sitting in the right seats on the bus, keeping everyone happy, um, you know, getting them to do the things that, that drive and energize them, right? And, um, and so I thought this book was, was really good. We, we talk a lot here about laying our issues on the table, being open and honest with each other, walking out of the room aligned with whatever decision we agree to, not backstabbing or politicking behind your back, but also not being offended if someone is throwing ideas on the table that are contrary to, you know, what the way you're thinking about a particular problem. And so wrestling, uh, Brene Brown taught, talks about, you know, wrestling in the, the mud of humanity uh, with, with uh, these kind of conversations. So, so right. good for you for doing that. Good for all the lawyers who, who do that and stick to it. It's a, it, you know, we, I'm trying to remember the name of the author for radical candor. Is it Kim Scott? I, yeah, yeah, I think it's Kim something. I think. Yeah. Kim's, you know. So Kim used to work at Google, and yep. she opens the book with a story of uh, how she she had this uh, person who was working for her. I think she calls him Dan in the book or something like that. Um, where basically, you know, da she was every time Dan didn't do something to her to her liking, she would just go and fix his work and never had a conversation with him. And it got to the point where it got so bad that she ended up letting him go. And in the exit meeting. She's telling him, you know, your work has been has been terrible. I've been fixing it for you all this time. And he looks at her and he says, well, why didn't you tell me? Like, I could have fixed it. I could have done better work. And that's how she opens the book with this, you know, under, understanding that if you don't give your people the, the feedback they need, if you think that you're protecting them, you're really not. And you're, you're preventing them from being able to rise up and become a better person. And then the book just gets better from there. It's just an awesome read. Very uh, smart to start with that story because every person who runs a business of any type will see themselves and go, oh yeah, I remember I did that with Billy or Susie. You know, oh my gosh, I feel so bad now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I love that you have your team reading a book together. Um, uh, that's that that's a a great a great idea and a great a great initiative. What I do here is when when we have a new coaching client come on board, um, I send them a welcome package, and in that welcome package, I send them um, four three books and two tools. So I send them uh, Living Forward by Michael Hyatt. I don't know if you're familiar with that book, uh, but Michael Hyatt and Daniel Harkavy uh, write this. It's a short read, but it's got some really powerful exercises in it. And it's all about creating a life plan for yourself so that you're not drifting through life. And then you get to the end and wonder, what did I accomplish? Um, and it's, so it's just all about being intentional with not just your business, but with everything that you're doing. And one of the exercises mm -hmm. in there that, I, that has been, impacted me very greatly that I, I want everyone to go through that experience is writing your own eulogy. So when you go through that process and you really start thinking about, okay, what do I want people to say about me? What do I want to be known for? That really gets you thinking about what you're doing and are you on the right path and are you doing the right thing? So that's one of the, one of the things I share is living forward. The next is uh, traction, which sure. I'm sure you're very familiar with the EOS system by uh, Gino Wickman. Um, and then finally profit first uh, by Mike Michalowicz. Now, I'm a profit first professional. My background is, uh, is accounting. So, um, you know, that to me, it's not for everybody. Like everyone has their style, their system, but, but most firm owners don't understand their numbers. They don't understand how to manage their cash. And it's a great read, even if you don't implement profit first to start to understand why it's not working for you. Um, so I, those are the three books that I send. And then on top of that, I, I, I include two tools. One is um, the 90X Action Planner. Uh, so 90X is, is a company that a friend of mine uh, founded. This is the, the goal planner I'm holding up. The 90X Goal Planner is a bigger version. I like the smaller version, the Action Planner. But the idea is that you focus on three primary goals for the quarter. And the planner helps you outline what are the action steps to take towards those goals. Because what happens is, is that we get so busy serving our clients. We get so busy doing our things that 
we don't do what needs to happen to move the business forward. And if we're not being intentional with that, we end up just um, stagnating, staying where we are. We don't make the kind of exponential growth that we're capable of. And um, business owners have a unique capability that is really left untapped with many of them. And that is that if you would just recognize that you have the power to just earn whatever you want, whatever you set your sights on is possible. And if, if you really recognize that, then you wouldn't be wasting your time with some of the things that law firm owners tend to do answering the phone and, uh, and handling their, you know, handling their marketing. And, and I mean, some stuff is, you know, when you're the face of the organization, different story you're doing, uh, if you're doing video stuff like that, but, uh, I'm talking about the nitty gritty behind the scenes stuff, the stuff that's easy to hire somebody, delegate to somebody to get done. Um, and then the other tool that I give is, so I, I, I give them the 90 X action planner. And then I also give, I came across this really, really cute tool. And I wish I had it in arm's reach to show you on the video. Um, but it's basically a bookmark that has a little notepad attached to it. So it, it, it it's uh, it's called smart marks by best self. You can get, find it on Amazon. Um, it's a really, I, I just, I happened to discover it and I was like, wow, this is so cool because I, I'm not a note taker when I read and there some people will write notes all over the book. Um, but I noticed that when I'm reading certain books, like w- one of the books that stood out to me was Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod and another one, Atomic um, Habits by James Clear, um, that there was a lot of takeaways that I wanted to just jot down. Um, And going through books like those, when I had that opportunity, I was like, you know what, I really wish that I had a way to to easily keep track of the notes and write it down. And then I found this bookmark and it was like a game changer because I could just write in there. And and, and this way I have one succinct notebook of notes from that specific, uh, that specific book. It's really, you know, it's really cute. Um, so that's what I do. I send that out to, to new, um, new coaching clients. And it's all because I believe that it's not, it's not me, right? I'm, I'm not the one who's going to make change in your life. I'm not, you know, I, I can speak into your life. I can help try to guide you. But ultimately, you have to learn to continue onward without me. Right, you have to learn to be able to make your own decisions, take your own actions, and continue learning yourself. So um, I, I think that it's, as a coach, it's my it's my job to not only help you by being there, but to also show you the different ways that you can continue without me. Yeah, and then have you know probably some level of accountability for that. I mean, so the things that you teach, the things that I teach, they're, they're not deep, dark, hidden, black box secrets, but they are patterns, and success does leave clues. And we know that if lawyers will do things in a certain order and, 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 and prioritize the things they do, because we're all busy running families, running law firms and, and trying to build practices, right? Um, but there's, there's definitely uh, patterns to this. Uh, and again, I just get back to, you know, we'll have some lawyers come and talk to us and join us. And, you know, they go away frustrated because they think that, if they join us on Wednesday, that by next Monday, their lives will be different. And it's, it just doesn't work that way, right? Um, so it is, it is work, focus, attention, reading, hanging out with people, I think, who are bigger, better, faster than you are. Um, and, and, and paying attention to when you throw the ball, like what happens to it? Like, what's the result? Okay, didn't go as far as I liked, right? What can we change? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's not... There's no secret, but but it is interesting that in any population, you know, you have your top five percent, ten percent, and twenty percent, and then no matter what the no matter who the guru is, who the book is, you're still going to have eighty percent of the people who who don't move the needle of their lives. That's human nature, um, and, and, but it's not on the coach; it's on them. Right, and the only thing that the coach can do is to is to point out the primary lesson, which I think uh, we discussed this pre pre recording action. I, you know, my coach tell, you know, home, you know, really just pounded into me action creates clarity. And I spent, I, you know, myself, I'm just guilty as, as anybody else years, just waiting for the right opportunity, trying dabbling in something, seeing if it worked and then it didn't work and then waiting another year. And then, you know, and when I started to just say, 
okay, I don't care about the result. I don't care about what I think or what's going to happen. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to follow this plan. I'm just going to do it. Um, and that's when I started to see movement. I started to see results. And that's when I, you know, things started to open up for me. Um, and it's not just my own personal experiences, you know, that we, you know, we all know that if you look at who's successful, look at what they're doing, look at how they're leading their life. Look at the, you know, they probably have a morning routine that's very intentional. They're probably, you know, hitting the pavement and getting work done every single day. And they're probably doing it in some fashion that's protecting them, their time so that they still have the flexibility, the freedom and the time to be able to do the other important things in their life. It's not at all work. Um, you know, I know that uh, one of the things that you that you talk about a lot is, you know, the fact that the 60 hour work norm for attorneys is, is not, you know, it's what we're used to, but we have to learn to be different than the norm. We have to recognize that that's not necessarily what's best for us. Um, just look at law school, right? Law school doesn't teach you how to run a business. It doesn't teach you entrepreneurship. It doesn't teach any of that. Why is that? What, why haven't they figured out by now that that's something you need to learn because it's different and people don't <laughs> like to do things differently. There's all sorts of there's all sorts of things going on. I think with law schools and curricula development, uh, and a lot of it is, uh, and this is just wrong in my view, which is, hey, this is the way we've always done it. So okay, okay, and this is why lawyers, as a profession, are being overrun with sadness and unhappiness because all these other businesses and industries have rejected the this is the way we've always done it. So that's why we we should keep doing it that way. They've rejected that notion lawyers seem stuck in it um and i i just and, and i'm sure you feel the same way it's like no no no. the world will move better if lawyers are happy absolutely okay. and okay and, and your and, success in your law firm requires your happiness right you can't possibly be successful in something when you're not happy doing it i think that's true um yeah there's a lot of the sad thing is so i'll talk to lawyers who've come out of good law schools gone into big law and, you know, I talked to a guy who's probably was working oh, shit, probably 100 hours a week or something. And uh, and he just, you know, I was saying, you know, there's easier ways to make like 150K a year or whatever he's making. And he goes, no, there isn't. I go, well, yeah, there is. <laughs> okay. And so, so the sad part about law school is that exactly what you just said, which is they've never even been introduced to the notion that you can learn to run a great business, use your skills, again, doing, doing that part of the law that you like doing, right? Um, there'll be a market that will pay you for it. And the client will be happy because they got a lawyer who's happy and good at the thing. The lawyer and his, his or her family will be happy because, you know, they're making money and they're living a balanced, a balanced life. And, that, and, and the employees, I mean, look, you know, I employ between the two businesses about 20, 22 people you know, that I'm sort of responsible for them and their families. Um, but that makes the world that, you know, that moves the needle of the world too. And, and we've got a great, a great working environment for people to come to. So, but I'm preaching to the choir here. What, awesome. I, what, what we need to do is continue to spread the word that this is, is available, that there are many, many thousands of lawyers now who've discovered this and who are rejecting the status quo. Again, part of the subtitle of the new book, Play Left Fullback, um, uh, and, and saying, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to do stuff I'm not good at and don't like doing just because the profession says I should, whatever it is, take court appointed, do more pro bono, whatever. I can do pro bono because I'm happy and successful. But if I'm a young lawyer and I'm- And very, because you want to, right? You have to, yeah. you should do it because you want to, to not because you have to. Yeah. I only want, and I only want to do stuff that's interesting to me, right? And, and so I don't, I, I, I will never go out to learn how to do a pro bono divorce because it's not interesting and I, nothing. But, but I do a lot of, I get to do a lot of interesting work helping people um, because everything else, you know, runs, uh, runs smoothly here, but young, but law students and young men and women in the profession, they hear this opposites. They still hear this course of, of, you know, putting client above everything else and service above everything else. And I just think that's backwards. And the whole, so the book play that fullback is all about it. It's a response to, so there was the, the ABA, report on lawyer wellness and then the state bar presidents like respond to that and their response is we're going to teach you how to do meditation 
kitty cats and be nice to each other. And I'm like, that, that's never going to change anything until you have a business that's a fun place to go to, or, or you're working in a place that's fun, fulfilling for you financially, emotionally, spiritually, all those things. And, so let's be, that, and let's be honest, you're not getting somebody who's working 100 hours a week to take time to meditate. <laughs> well, but they do. So these big firms, you know, they have, okay, now we have, you know, bring your yoga mat in and stuff. So I just think that the, the traditional bar has this 100% wrong, 100% wrong. Um, and that, you know, we are the voice. And I've, I've got, I've had so many lawyers who come to work with us, either young lawyers and, and lawyers in their 70s who are like, holy cow, I'm, I'm revitalized and excited again about the practice of law. What have we done? We've taught them to think about their life. We've shown them some things that they can do to attract that client that, that's fulfilling and energizing for them and to build a practice that isn't a stress pool. I love it. I love it. Now, let me ask you, the title of your book is Play Left Fullback. And mm -hmm. I know the answer because I read it, but um, would you share the story of where that title came from? Because I think that that's a great example. I, I mean, you use it as an example to demonstrate demonstrate why you need to be different than the status quo. Um, I'd love it if you just shared that story with our audience today. Yeah, so I was fortunate. I grew up playing soccer in a, in a hotbed in the 70s. Uh, Annandale, Virginia was one of the leaders in the country. I was trying out for my first travel team. We call it select teams back then. When I was, um, I think, 12 or 13, we're driving to the field and, and my dad says, if the coach asks, tell him that you play left fullback, that's your position. I said, well, my dad's an engineer. He's a great guy. You know, coached all of his kids' teams. Um, I said, uh, well, "Well, why? Like, I'm not left-footed. I'm not a defender. I like to score goals, and I've never played defender left foot left-sided at all in my life. Why should I do that?" He says, "Because there's a, a lot of really good guys. <laughs> you know, I know them. Right? They're really good players out here." you'll be the only one that says you want to play left fullback. And the goal at this point is just get on the team. If we get on the team, we'll figure out the rest later. And he was exactly right. And that team from, you know, time we were 12 to time we were 19, we were national champ. You know, we became national champions when we were 19. Um, but the, the point is to show up differently, right? And, and to just make the team just, it goes back to our mantra, get started. And for me, it was, it being able to play with guys who were better than I was, faster than I was, you know, just more skilled. Um, and so that's, that's the story. And play left over. I, I tell that a lot from the stage. Um, it's all about looking around and seeing what is everybody else doing? So just talk marketing for a moment. So what are, if I'm a divorce lawyer and I'm not, but if I was, what are all the other lawyers doing to try to get divorce cases? Okay. Well, let me try to think of something completely different because if everyone else is doing it, well, that just means it's average. It leads to average results. Like how could I show up differently? So that's play left football, like show up differently. Yeah. And, and the message that, that I took from that story is that when everybody wants to, and we'll go back to your marketing example, right? You, you're always trying to figure out like most, not you, not me, but, but most law firm owners, when they're going into the marketplace, they're trying to figure out how do I, how do I compete with all this other competition, right? How do I get the business that these other people are going for? And um, I think you're asking the wrong question in that. And this story really highlights that because it's not a question of how do I compete? It's how do I differentiate myself? How do I be different? so that I'm not competing. So that it's, it, when people come to me, they're coming to me because they want to work with me, not because they've evaluated three other law firms and, and have decided that I'm the best because I'm cheaper or because I'm going to do it faster or any of those things. What's going to make them come to me that because they want to work with me as an individual as opposed to, or, me, or, or you know, my team, as opposed to um, the other possibilities out there that they haven't even checked out because they already came in through the door knowing this is who they want to work with. And I yeah. think that if we can figure out how to differentiate ourselves in that way, which you do a great job of highlighting, um, using Dan Kennedy's methods and, and, uh, you know, being a, a published author in your specific niche, um, you know, and, and for, for me, I teach uh, the, you know, the current social media uh, ways to, to grow an audience, you know, whether you're doing Instagram posts or you're doing live videos, or you're, you know, you're doing something that you're putting your expertise out there. But more than that, like I do on this podcast, I share personal things about my life. 
I'm a person. I'm not just here to share specific tactics and strategies. I'm here to have a conversation with you and expose who I am as an individual. So by the time I get somebody on a free coaching session where I'm going to pitch them our coaching program, they already know they want to work with me. It's just a question of how. And that's where you want to position yourself as, as a lawyer. And the, you know, th this example of just get on the team, you know, just, just get to the point where people just want to, they want to figure out how to work with you. It's just a question of how, um, and that, you know, that's the parallel I, you know, I, I drew from that story. Um, one of the things I recently highlighted was information products for, for law firms. We did a, a big push over at, back in May. Uh, we did a one day virtual event and then we did a bunch of podcast episodes around it. I firmly believe that if you look at your client's journey and you look at the pain point they're experiencing when they're looking for a lawyer and just go one step back, what is the pain they have experienced before that happens? So if you're a divorce attorney, what happens before that? Well, they're freaking fighting with their, with their spouse. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're not happy. So if you can solve the problem before you, and you put that information out there now, when somebody ends up not being able to solve it, they're going to come to you for the next step. And, you know, and, and that's, that's another way of, of looking at this and of a competitive landscape where I'm picking, you know, I, I need to get a bigger piece of the pie. You're expanding the pie rather than trying to, to fight over what size piece you're getting. Exactly. So the way we would expand on that is to say, we, we don't know when it is that someone will actually notice us. And it may well be, as you're now describing, it's a very good idea, like pre, pre the need, right? But there's a whole, there's a whole journey. So in the personal injury world, it could be, Hey, I've just been in an accident and I'm getting calls. And so what do I do? It could be, oh, well, now this is a little bit more complicated. Maybe I do, I do need a lawyer. I'm not even sure if I need one. Let's check that out. It could be, I need one, but how do I find one? It could be, I got one and he's bad and I want to fire him. And so now creating an information product that talks to that consumer, no matter where they are on their moving parade of interest, right? Because we can't really... We can't control when they find out about us. Um, and so again, it's, it's work because most lawyers will go, well, I'll book, well, that's really hard to do. And I'm, and I'm now advocating, no, maybe it's six books, right? It's six books for, right. for, for your, your journey. So let's not stop at one. And, and their eyes, um, you know, start to roll. But, um, and, and when I started this, it was hard and it was expensive and finding, you know, content publishers was difficult, but today, you know, you can go in and shoot, you know, 40 videos in a day of, of high quality stuff without spending an arm and a leg. Again, answering questions that the prospect may have at each point of their journey so that when they do call, I go, oh, but your team can say, oh, Ben's, Ben's got a video on this. Let me send you a link to that video, right? And so um, it, 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 it's, I, I didn't invent this, right? I learned it from others. I learned it from other industries. And I think that's a big principle that certainly that we teach, which is look outside the legal industry um, and say, how does a bagel guy, how does the used car dealer, how does the hair salon owner, how are they getting customers and keeping them and having them refer? Well, they might have some good ideas. And then Moshe, if they're in my community, because I like to identify the ones here, Oh, hey, come over to my office. Let, let's meet every month. Let's a bunch of, of smart people from different businesses. Just hang out in my office. I'll buy the lunch. Let's just share ideas. And now you're the center, right? You're the center of a, of a, of a real social network with real people in front of you. Yeah, I love the example that you gave with the different um, the different spots in in the journey of where somebody might need you and start looking, um, you know, and that that just goes to show like this, you know, there's, there's so many marketers put an emphasis on on SEO, um, you know, even pay per click, right? You you don't know when somebody is specifically looking for you, so you kind of need to you need to be everywhere with everything at all times. Um, one of the things that when you highlighted that that really struck me is I don't know how many people. Are are familiar with Ask by Ryan Levesque, um, but that is a, a, a great um, 
a great system to use when you have all of those different parameters. If you're able to figure out, okay, based on, so what happens is, is you ask them, you do a deep dive survey. So somebody in your, in your, in your example of personal injury space, you basically advertise to, Hey, if you've, you know, if you've been injured or, or whatever, uh, you want to know um, whether you need a lawyer or whether your lawyer's good or whether, you know, take this survey and we'll tell you where you stack up in the, you know, in the, in the, you know, personal injury case or whatever, whatever it is. And now you ask them a series of questions and those questions very specifically are going to put them into buckets where, you know, they, they're just early on trying to figure it out or they, you know, they, they already have an attorney. They need, they need to fire it and find some fire that attorney, find someone else, or they just need to find an attorney. But based on the questions, you choose which, which one they're going at. And then you, you, you give them a name. You see, you tell them, okay, you're, you know, you're, you're this persona of person. And the good news is that we, you know, we have a perfect solution for you. So you just basically have a custom video or a custom, you know, email or something that you're providing them for their specific point in the journey. And then you take them down that path. And that's a great, great way to, to, to drive people in the direction that you want to take them and writing a book, a I'm not going to poo-poo it, but I, I just haven't been written one myself yet. Um, but it's something that I want to do. It does seem like a daunting thing. And, and I, I think that you can start with something easier, right? You can create content that's not necessarily as detailed or as in-depth as a book and still have success with that and get to the book eventually. Um, so I, I, don't, I think that people just should, should want to move forward and take action on this rather than say, oh, you know, I'll get to that someday. If once a week for a year you wrote a blog post or something about your practice area, then you go on Fiverr or someplace and get someone else to take those 52 things you wrote and make them into a book that gets you 80% of the way there. You come back, put the icing on top. You then take it, put it out into the universe. People will tell you what you missed, what you're wrong about, what they were you know, not clear about. Boom. That's how, that's how books get created. <laughs> People do not sit down anymore and go, it was a dark and stormy night, chapter one, verse one, right? Um, we, we, we write a lot, we, we produce content a lot, and then we have other people that help us, um, you know, put the content into something that could be called a book. <laughs> yeah. And I'm actually pulling up my, my podcast, um, show right now because we recently had a guest on, and I just want to find the episode number. It's Mike Saunders, episode 110, Positioning Yourself as an Authority with Mike Saunders. He has a done-for-you service. Well, he'll do three interviews with you. And over the course of those three interviews, he'll, he'll ask you a bunch of information about the, the specific topic area that you want. And then he'll have that um, uh, turned into a book for you. Um, and uh, it's a really interesting conversation and an interesting idea to, to have that service done for you. It's really good. It's because lawyers, you know, we're, we, you know, most of us don't want to sit down and start chapter one, verse one, here's my book, right? And there's today, and that's how I did it, right? Many years ago, I did it that way. But, you know, I'm, I'm published this book, I got the next one is coming out uh, in September, it's a smaller book, and I've got another one on my shelf that will be next year on leadership. So it's, and it's mainly, I write a lot. I write hundreds of articles, both for my herd, for, you know, whatever, our newsletters, weekly faxes a year. And then I hire someone to go, hey, go over this. Let's chunk it together. Let's, uh, the book next book on leadership, find what I've written on leadership. Let's at least uh, start there, right? And so lots of, no excuses. I mean, look, there's no excuses for being sick, for not being successful you know, or at least not be able to be better today than you were yesterday. Let's just start there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as we're, as we're uh, running out of time or, you know, coming to the end of this interview, um, there's probably something that you find in the average typical law firm owner that comes into your space um, where if you can break it down into one piece of advice or one, you know, uh, list of, Hey, if you want to be successful, here's the, here are the top things that you need to know and really need to own and, and start doing from this day forward. What would that be? Yeah. So I think it is acquiring the business 
skills we talked earlier, you know, being able to read spreadsheets, being able to at least understand marketing principles, because even if I'm going to outsource books and numbers, I'm going to outsource marketing, someone still has to be the judge of, of the stuff that comes back to me. And so, it, it, but it doesn't have to be you, because especially if you're in a partnership, I know plenty of law firm partners where one lawyer, he's the rainmaker, the marketer, the idea guy, you know, the visionary, boom, working with a really good trial lawyer who just likes working hard all the time and together each doing what they're happy and good at, right? Together make a great, a great place. So I do think it is a business skills. Unfortunately, you know, in Virginia where we have mandatory 12 hour CLE a year, you actually cannot get credit for teaching a class or going to a class on how do you read a, a law firm spreadsheet? How do you know whether you're ahead or behind, right? And that's to me is just crazy land. So I think overall, that's it. It's, it's, it's wrapping your arms enough around the business skills to be able to at least evaluate because you talked about SEO. So if I'm, if I'm hiring a company to do SEO, but I know nothing about internet marketing, I know nothing at all about SEO, then I'm like, okay, here's my credit card and I hope this works, right? You have to have some foundational knowledge or someone I think in your organization who, who you trust has foundational knowledge or a really, really trusted vendor who you know, has come on high recommendation, who you've now worked with, who will be transparent. And they're out there. Look, they're, they're out there. I'm not anti-vendor uh, you know, in, in any way, shape or form. Um, but I think that's what it is. Um, a marketing is, you know, the good news is there's very few who are interested in taking time out of their busy lives much to, to grasp the business, to read. I read 50, 60 books a year. I listen to another 20 books on Audible. You know, I don't have a Kindle. I'm, I read, you know, real books. And, and I am a note taker. So my books will be, so here's what I do. And it's a tip from folks maybe is I read, I take notes, and then I transfer. I have, a, I have this document that's about 200 pages, and it's, it's notes from books and seminars, and it's all online, so it, it's totally searchable. Um, that's how you, an old guy, like I can't remember, everything. that's how I accumulate and organize my, my knowledge base of stuff. So there's a lot packed into your very simple question, um, but uh, you know, it's, it's this business, it's the money, and the people part of running a real business that are, I think, are really important. I love, I, I love it, and and it certainly was not a simple question. It's trying to trying to get all the extra information that we ran out of time to cover. Yeah, I <laughs> that, actually, yes. <laughs> so uh, this is this has been a, a great conversation, and and Ben, I. I I think we're going to have to do this again at some point. So um, we'll definitely, definitely keep in touch and, and, and have you back because I, there's a, there's a lot that I wanted, wanted to ask you about that we just didn't have time to do. Um, before we go, I, I would like to give you the opportunity to share with our listeners, people who resonated with you, people who want to learn more about you. They want to know more about your book. Um, where, where would you send them to take the next step with, you know, keeping in touch with you? Yeah. So, so the, I mean, the book we've been talking about is, Play Left Fullback. It's written for the solo and small firm market. You can go to playleftfullback.com. You read more about it. If you go to Amazon and buy it and then go back to playleftfullback.com and insert uh, like your purchase code or something, then we've got a free bonus for you. That's a great place. Greatlegalmarketing.com, of course. And if you want to see what the law firm is doing, visit benglasslaw.com and go find our YouTube channel on YouTube. We have hundreds and hundreds of videos. And I think if you watch them over the years, you'll see how, how we've changed our thinking about what, you know, how to use videos, um, how to use webinars and stuff. So there's, there's like four sources free, basically the book, I think on Amazon last week is about 15 bucks or something. So, and if you like the philosophy, right, then you'll like everything else. If you, if you don't agree with me that the law firm should be a source of happiness, money, um, you know, joy and energy, then you probably won't like anything else I say. But I think a lot of people at least express the view that they want happiness, joy, energy, and money out of their law firm. And, um, you know, I think we're pretty good at helping people. Again, you know, the, the goal is, can you be better tomorrow than you were today? This is the CrossFit mantra, right? I'm not looking at 
the woman next to me who's lifting more weights than me, I'm comparing myself to what I'm able to do. Yeah, com comparisonitis is is a is a true illness when it comes to um, entrepreneurship, um, and you know we we have to we have to stop looking at what other people are doing, how fast they did it. You know, I for a long time I wanted to just have quick results, and what I did was is I I, I disabled myself in the process, right? I, I was constantly going after the quick win, which was a very expensive way to try to grow my business because it, you think that you're going to put dollars instead of time. And sometimes you have to put the effort in. Um, and, you know, so it's a matter of rolling up your sleeves and getting to work and, and taking, you know, and, and just sticking with something. I mean, this podcast is a perfect example. Started back in March of 2019. Um, the first three months, we had, I don't know, like a thousand downloads over the course of the entire three months. Uh, and now just a year and three months later, and you know we've we've exceeded twenty thousand downloads at the time of this recording. By the time this gets published, we'll probably be past thirty thousand downloads. Like it just builds on itself and accelerates. Thank your daughter for that, right? What's that? I said thank your daughter who's running that for you. Yeah, absolutely. She's doing an awesome job. And don't forget to join the Reader's Nook. Um, just search for that on Facebook. It's a group. You'll find it there and just request access. It's going to ask for your email address so she can communicate with you by email. We'll also communicate with you by email. But um, definitely, uh, you know, ongoing uh, learning and, and information. One of the things we want to do with that book club is try to get the authors to come on. So we'll do like an interview and then we'll do like a, a post interview conversation just for the book club. Um, so we're, you know, there, there's some things that we're trying to play with to see what we can do to make it more exciting and, and interesting for people. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, what, what everything that you shared, we're going to link all of that in the show notes. So folks, if you're out jogging, if you're driving right now, if you're in the shower, whatever you're doing, listening to this podcast, or, or even if you're watching the video, uh, if you haven't written down any of these links or anything like that, it's all going to be linked up in the show notes. We try to do that uh, as detailed as possible for you. Uh, so definitely go to playleftfullback.com, check it out. Um, buy it on Amazon. We'll link that up for you as well. And, um, and, 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 you know, follow the people that resonate with you. Like, I think that's something that you cover early on in your book as well. Um, which is just, you know, pick the people that you want talking into your life. Don't try to follow everybody. Don't try to learn from everybody, but tune into the people that, that you feel good you know, listening to them and, and, and hearing what they have to say, you respect them uh, because then you can take action on that and not be worried about whether or not you're taking the right action. And if then, you trust and, somebody. And when you find those people, you know, reach out to them and, and, and thank them, you know, and, and, and ask, feel free to ask questions. I mean, you know, I, I find most of that most highly successful people are willing to share with people who they believe will actually do something with the information. So I don't, I don't like having my time wasted at all, but I talk to a lot of lawyers and a lot of small biz entrepreneurs, small biz entrepreneurs here in Northern Virginia. Um, and I enjoy doing that. Um, but I, you know, I stop talking to you the moment I figure out that you're not taking any notes and not doing anything with this stuff. Cause now you've wasted right. my time. It was a crime. <laughs> right. Or, or you've come to the conversation to argue with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 but yeah, but yeah, but yeah. <laughs> All right, with that, we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah, man. Thanks yeah. for having me. Ben, on, man. Thank you, thank you so much for your time and for and for sharing everything. Um, I I love your life story. I love the, the you know how you got to where you are. Um, the examples that you use in the book, the play left fullback story. I mean, I really resonated with your material, um, and uh, I enjoyed it. So I'm sure that other people will too. So definitely check that out. Buy the book, read it, and um, folks. You know how to take the next step with me. Uh, you know, just subscribe to this podcast. Leave us a rating and review if you like the show. Uh, come back for more next time. Well, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday. So every Tuesday I do a solo episode. Every Thursday we do an interview. Sometimes we pepper in a little bonus for you somewhere along the way. Um, but we're pretty, we've been pretty good and consistent with that schedule and I don't see that changing anytime soon so uh, you're listening to this on a Thursday come back on Tuesday and you'll hear from me again uh, and really if you like the show the key is just hit subscribe so to make sure that you get every one of our episodes in your podcast player Ben thank you so much Thanks, take care Bye -bye. 
That's it for this week's episode of Profit With Law. If you have enjoyed the show, please consider sharing it with at least one person. Imagine how many lives we can change if we each shared this episode. Another way to share the episode is on social media. We appreciate your support and look forward to you joining us again next week.